1997 coup against the government of General Sani Abacha has continued to elicit controversy depending on which side of the divide you believe. On this channel, we have explained the account of the coup as given by Lieutenant General Oladi Podia. While many viewers took it as it was presented, others, however, consider it a false account and believe that Dia actually plotted to overthrow General Sani Abacha. And I told him that, look, the, 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 the foolishness, the devil that you used me to, 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 to go along with these people without mentioning it to you, is just because of the gap that you created between us. And I cited all these examples that I'm citing to you. In this video, we will bring to your view a detailed account of the coup as told by Lieutenant General Ishaya Rizi Bamiyi. This account of the coup is inspired by the book Vindication of a General, written by Lieutenant General Ishaya Bamiyi. Hello, 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 His Plus. Welcome to this episode on His Pool Media. Gabriel here. Lieutenant General Ishaya Rizi Bamiyi claimed that within a space of two years, General Dia was involved in two military coups. He is quoted to have said, Again, within a space of two years, General Oladipo Dia, second in command to General Sani Abacha, was caught in the center of another coup. It is an issue which Nigerians have extensively debated and commented upon. According to Bamiyi, General Dia, who masterminded the coup with the support of officers like General Ibrahim Sabu and wanted to destroy him, cowardly denied the plot. General Dia started planning to overthrow General Abacha as early as 1994 when Bamiyi was the commander of Lagos Garrison Command. At that time, it was the responsibility of the service chiefs to receive the commander-in-chief any time he visited Lagos, which during Abacha's time was occasional. The commander Lagos Garrison Command would receive the chief of general staff at the Moritala Mohamed Airport and see him off. Bamiyi was always on hand to receive General Dia at the airport and escort him to his private residence at Fajuyi Road, Ikeja, or the vice president's home in Ikoyi, depending on where he wanted to stay. On one such visit at his Ikeja residence, Dia mentioned how General Sani Abacha had not been doing well. He made the same statement during the next visit and Bamiyi asked him what the problem was. Dia mentioned that the commander-in-chief did not come to the office early and was not listening to him and other senior people in the government. Bami claimed that he mentioned to Dia that Abacha would listen to him because of their special relationship. According to Bami, several times, General Abacha has stopped plans to retire General Dia. On the next visit, Dia openly said that there was need to remove General Abacha because he was being blamed for the failure of the government from various quarters. Bami asked him which quarters were complaining. He got no specific response from Dia. But General Dia went on to inform Bami that he was one of the few officers he trusted. Hence, he would rely on him to remove General Abacha from office so that the country would move forward under his leadership. Bami said, I will think over it and get back to you. If you are still watching this video and it is valuable to you, consider subscribing and book the like button as well. Thank you. Bamiyi would later inform General Abacha about his discussion with Dia. Abacha threatened to put Dia on trial but was advised against such action. According to Bamiyi, I suggested there would be no evidence for a conviction and General Dia would not be acting alone so there was need for patience. Bami was appointed Chief of Army Staff in April 1996 and General P.N. Aziza was appointed to take over Lagos Garrison Command. It became Aziza's responsibility to receive and see off the Chief of General Staff at the Moritala Mohamed Airport. After returning to Lagos from the tour of 2nd Mechanized Division, General P.N. Aziza approached Bami at his Chief of Army Staff official residence. Bami is quoted to have said, he looked worried and I said, I hope all is well. He later told me how General Dia had told him of the need to overthrow General Sani Abacha and he believed Dia was serious about it. I laughed at first and General Aziza was surprised. He said, Giwa, why are you laughing at something so serious? You know, this is a matter of life and death. I told him it was nothing new. General P. N. Aziza then asked me what I was going to do about it. 
and I assure him I would do something. I knew General Aziza would want me to act and it was in my best interest to do so because if there was an investigation, I would be held responsible for having known about a coup and hiding it. I went to Abacha the following day and told him what Aziza had told me. General Abacha said he wanted to hear from Aziza directly. I sent for General Aziza to meet me in Abuja and the two of us went to see General Abacha. General Aziza told him exactly what he had told me. From Abacha's look, he was not surprised. He directed us to play along with Dia until we knew what he really wanted. I suggested that General Abacha should call Dia for us to challenge him and make him resign, but Abacha disagreed and said we did not know what had been happening. I later found out that General MC Ali, Chief of Army Staff and some service chiefs were retired because of their alleged plan to remove General Abacha. In his book, The Siege of a Nation, MC Ali claims that the Dia coup was a setup by General Abacha and Bamiyi, designed to pave way for Abacha's tight hold on power. If the setup claim was true, why then did MC Ali in the same book confirm Bamiyi's claim about Dia? He wrote, on three occasions, the Chief of General Staff, General Uladi Podia, had suggested that General Abacha should be overthrown. On the third occasion, he suggested that we might draw General Shia Bahmiyi into the plan since the latter was commander of the Strategic Lagos Garrison Command. According to the same book, Ali wrote, During one of the General Bahmiyi's visit to the Flagstaff's houses, I cast a bet and said, It will appear that the boys have hijacked the regime on a course not very clear to me. He did not respond but merely stared at me. I quickly steered the discussion into some other direction. The truth is that the garrison commander was rather cunning and slippery, but I could be wrong. From General Ali's write-up, it is clear that they had wanted to overthrow General Sani Abacha and thought they could use Bamiyi and actually tried to use him in 1997. Dia's denial of planning the 1997 coup is therefore irresponsible and cowardly, Bamiyi opined. He continued, General MC Ali was my boss but lacked the courage to come out and tell me what he wanted. Instead, he started talking about boys hijacking the regime. He did not tell me who the boys were, what they had done or were doing and what he wanted done. Yet, he expected me to have said something about his statements. This statement confirms General Diaz's intention to overthrow General Sani Abacha. It is very clear that General MC Ali had been nursing the plan to overthrow General Abacha as well. On page 343 of his book, General Ali claimed that he had three options when it was clear to him that he was going to be relieved of his appointment as Chief of Army Staff. One option was to stage a preemptive coup d'etat, but was this option really feasible to Ali? Bami had this to say, he could not have succeeded against Abacha at that time because he lacked the support of higher commanders. I am surprised that he could mention a coup d'etat considering that he and General Diaz's political reading of the state of affairs was that the depth and intensity of security watching in place was astonishingly inadequate or poorly perceived. It would have been the same if General Ali had attempted to forcefully overthrow General Sani Abacha. I believe that General MC Ali knew this and never took the risk. The ringleaders of coups masterminded by Colonel Guatabe and General Dia popularized the notion of setup, a fact which comes out very prominently when General Oladipo Dia demanded that General Ishaya Bamiyi be brought to trial. He would even go as far as making allegations that General Bamiyi, as the chief of army staff, was the mastermind, planner and investigator of the coup. General Dia claimed he had been systematically invaded into the coup when it became clear to the chief of army staff that his plans to unseat Abacha had drawn heat and that General Abacha and Bamiyi worked in concert to set up General Dia and pave the way for General Abacha's tight grip on power. On page 357 of the book, Ali claims that General Aboki Abdullahi Ahmed a key member of the steering committee expressed doubt in the first quarter of 1994 over the head of state's leadership. He jokingly suggested we should consider relieving him of his job. What Ahmed got from General Ali was a questioning stare. Did this not all go well for the chief of army staff? 
It also confirmed that he was not loyal to Abacha. Following the information at his disposal, General Abacha directed Aziza and Bami not to tell any of the security services, the SSS, the Directorate of Military Intelligence, and the National Security Advisor. He said he would tell them himself at the right time. The stage for the actual planning was set. According to Bamiyi, we started holding meetings and accepting invitations from Dia. The first meeting was held in the government quarter in Asokoro, with General Dia, General Onlanri Waju, and Bamiyi in attendance. General Onlanri Waju did not say anything throughout the meeting. Dia spoke throughout the meeting, telling us how General Abacha had become selfish and would not listen to anybody and the need to remove him to get things going. That was the first time he mentioned that he would be the head of state. He directed Bami to see if the commanding officers around Abuja would be agreeable to the plan, and Bami chipped in. That would be no problem because the brigade commander had no control of the commanding officers due to his inexperience. This was true and became evident on the day of the coup. He was still sleeping when the commanding officer made all the arrests and was only aware of what was happening when he was awoken about 2 a.m. in the morning to be informed. Such a thing should not happen from the planning stage to the actual operation with the commander not getting a hint. Other meetings took place at the guest house with General Dia, General Lariwaju, Commanding Officer 7 Guards Battalion, General Dia Security Officer Major Olushigun Fadikbe, and Bami Yi. Of course, General Abacha was always briefed after every meeting. Other meetings were held between General Dia and Bami Yi in his office. When the issue of international support came up, Dia informed Bami Yi that he was working on it. And on the issue of feeding soldiers, he provided $60,000 to be given to the general officer commandings to provide feeding for soldiers if there was a need. This money was taken to General Abacha. While presenting the money to Abacha, Bami made a joke with him, saying, This is your worth at the moment. He only smiled, collected the money, and later returned it to Bami. The money was used as exhibit during the trial. In respect of funds for feeding soldiers in Abuja, it was agreed that Dia would release money to the commanding officer, Seven Guards Battalion, who was fully briefed. General Dia released the sum of 2 million naira to commanding officer Seven Guards Battalion. Subsequently, Bami proceeded to Inugo for a Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference. At that time, General Abacha had dissolved his cabinet and the seven military officers who were ministers were not deployed. Bami made a case for General Adisa to General Abacha, who ordinarily had a soft spot for him. He agreed to return Adisa as a Minister of Works. General Ishaya Bamiyi informed Adisa accordingly and suggested he should go to Enugu with him to take a break and return as soon as the appointment was announced. He agreed. They agreed that Bamiyi should pick him up for the trip from his residence at Asokoro on December 9, 1997. On the agreed date, however, the Chief of Army Staff drove to Adisa's house to pick him up, but he had changed his mind and would not go. General Bamiyi said, on Wednesday during the Chief of Army Staff Conference, the Commander-in-Chief sent for me and I traveled to Abuja. General Bacha asked me if I knew that Adisa was involved in this coup plan. I told him it was not possible because I knew that Adisa was very loyal. General Bacha told me to find out. I drove to his house and he invited me into his bedroom. Before I could say anything, he said, we must remove Abacha. I was not shocked but kept my cool. I asked him how this had come about and he told me that on the day of our planned trip to Inugu, General Dia had called him and told him about the planned coup and said I was aware of it. He told me he had to agree because he was a Yoruba man and if he refused, he will be termed a bad Yoruba man. I reminded him that I was partly Fulani but he said he was more of a Yoruba than Fulani. I asked him if General Dia told him of any plans and he said General Abacha was to attain a function at the Sheraton Hotel and he planned to blow up his car afterwards using an RPG. 
I drew General Adisa's attention to the difficulty of Emmy and RPG and that there was a likelihood that the houses nearby could be hit. He said the houses could be repaired after everything was over. I returned to the villa to see General Abacha and told him of my discussion with General Adisa. He said he only wanted me to confirm this and told me how he had invited Adisa when he had been told Adisa was involved. Adisa had gone to the commander-in-chief and after some discussion, Abacha asked him if there was anything he wanted to tell him. Adisa said there was nothing and left to go, but came back. General Abacha asked him again if there was anything he wanted to tell him. Adisa went to the gates three times and returned, but failed to tell General Abacha anything. While still at the planning stage, Captain U. M. Baturi, security officer to General Bami, informed him that there were plans to eliminate Major Hamza R. Mustafa on the coup d. Bami immediately sent Captain Baturi to inform R. Mustafa on the afternoon of the coup d. He also called Hamza R. Mustafa and told him not to leave his office until everything was over. Mustafa remained there and nothing happened to him. Bami claimed that unknown to him, General Dia had also planned to eliminate him because he was sure the coup would succeed. He got some of his personal guards to go to the Chief of Army Staff official residence in Fort IBB. The soldiers came fully armed and cocked their weapons. They got to Bami's residence and insisted they wanted to see him. His oddly, Ebel Nanshab rallied the soldiers in the official residence who overpowered the soldiers sent by Dia. Those soldiers were charged at the tribunal but were discharged and acquitted. Bami would later found out that Generals Aziza and Magashi were also targeted for elimination because Dia and Olariwaju believed it would be difficult to control in the planned Dia government. General Magashi was brought into the plan by General Dia, who felt there was a need to get an officer from the north. General Dia felt Magashi, a Muslim from Kanu, the hometown of Abacha, could fit in. Bami wrote, We also spoke to Abacha and he agreed that we included General Magashi in the plan. It was also felt that since Magashi was the immediate past commander of the Brigade of Guards, he stood a better chance of directing operations in Abuja. While actions in Abuja continued, action in Lagos was being carried out. General Aziza was in his office as garrison commander when General Orariwaju came in. Aziza, who speak Yoruba fluently, heard General Orariwaju directing the colonels to gun down Aziza as soon as he got into his office. Fortunately, the office had two entrances and General Aziza ordered soldiers to arrest General Orariwaju and a colonel. They discovered that the colonel had a cocked pistol on safety with which he would have shot Aziza. After the arrest, Aziza phoned to inform Bamiyi. I informed him of the arrest in Abuja and Thea's plan to eliminate me. I later left Fort IBB for the villa and went to Major Al Mustafa's office where I met Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa, the Chief of Defense Intelligence, Brigadier General Ibrahim Sabo, the Director of Military Intelligence and other officers. While we were all there, General Dia was brought in. Dia had escaped to the house of one of the security officers. He was said to have been hiding under a mattress, but part of his legs had been sticking out. He was brought into the office where we were all seated and led to see General Abacha. Everything was recorded without his knowledge, chronicling all events until he petitioned against Major Al Mustafa and Bamiyi. According to Bamiyi, we thank God the tape was available and has since silenced Dia for good. Having affected the arrest of cool suspect and set up the tribunal, Bamiyi's work with security officers started. They were kept out of the matter by General Abacha and were not personally briefed by him until very late. They felt let down because they did not expose the failed coup and could have collected some money from a General Abacha for an investigation. They started doing everything possible to ensure that Aziza and Bamiyi were charged for the coup. Knowing very well Bami was reporting to his superior officer. In the case of General Aziza, he had reported to Bami and Bami reported to the commander-in-chief who directed everything that went on. According to Bami, I could not have reported to the chief of defense staff 
because it affected only the army. During the investigation in Jos, which was headed by Major General Chris Garuba, General Sabo, Colonel Franco Menka, and General M.B. Mara insisted that Aziza and Bami should be investigated. They campaigned seriously for the two to be detained and tried. Pressure was put on General Abacha, who was not ready to allow the two officers to face trial. When Bami got to know the pressure on the CNC, he suggested to be allowed to go. Meanwhile, General Sabo and Omenka started celebrating that Bami and Aziza were going to be arrested and tried. Aziza and Bami went to face the investigation panel. While they sat, General Dia and Olariwaju were brought in. The chairman of the panel, General Chris Garuba, and his team settled down. Bami would explain, I waited for anyone to ask me a question, but no one did. Eventually, one Air Force officer on the panel asked me about the Chief of Army Staff Conference in Sokoto in 1997. I corrected him and told him the conference took place in Inugu in 1997. That was the only question asked by the panel. Interestingly, there were verbal exchanges between Dia and Aziza. When Dia tried to blame Aziza for his arrest, Aziza told him that his plan to be head of state failed and he should take responsibility for his failure. Aziza was asked a few questions and that was all. Dia, Adisa and Olariwaju were returned to their cells and Aziza and Bami were released. Omenka put his face down and could not talk to anybody, not even Bami. While Bami and Aziza flew back to Abuja, Omenka was looking for ways to implicate them in a plot. The Director General of SSS, Peter, was invited to the panel and made to implicate them but there was no evidence to prove his allegations. He would later apologize to Bami for his role at the investigation panel. According to him, he did it to save his daughter and himself because the DMI was on his back to implicate them. Bami was later invited as a witness during the trial. He went with a prepared written address which he read and handed over to the tribunal. After his speech, he was asked about his trip to Escravos, but nothing about the coup, and he said he has never visited Escravos in his life. Bami was discharged by the tribunal. That was the end of the coup attempt as it consigns Bami. But this would open up other struggles with the security operatives. Bami said, I read with interest the story in the Saturday Sun newspaper on 27th August 2011, page 15 titled, Abdus Kam opens up about how Abiola died. I took the paper with anxiety to see what Abdus Salami had to say about Abiola's death, only to discover that one Alhaji Shaibu Badegi, who was said to be one-time Director General of Publicity under the administration of Abubakar Kore, Governor of Niger State, was the one speaking from Abubakar's camp. Instead of concentrating on Abiola's death, Badegi may have been sponsored to speak about the failed 1997 Dia coup plot. Badegi was quoted to have said, As far as I am concerned, Dia did not organize any coup. Abacha and Al Mustafa themselves did, in order to eliminate those Abacha felt antagonized his ambition to translate himself into a live president. I do not know how Badegi got his information. I believe that people should comment on issues of which they are sure. General Bacha, as commander-in-chief, did not need to plan to eliminate any of his subordinates. He had the power to retire them at any time. Dia himself cannot deny planning the 1997 coup with the evidence produced at the Oputa panel that sat in Lagos, where it was shown to all present including Dia's two wives how Dia was begging Abacha on the coup issue at the same venue and in other places. General Adisa, who was co-opted into the coup plan, confessed that they actually planned the coup and that if Abacha had executed them, he would have been justified. It is clear that Dia planned the coup and Mustafa had no hand in it, Bami said. He knew about the coup only a few days prior to its implementation. Dia started planning the coup as far back as 1994 when Bami was commander Lagos Garrison Command and he told me of his plans. He continued when General Aziza became commander Lagos Garrison and Bami was now chief of army staff. All along, 
General Abacha was aware of Diaz's plan but ignored him. So, how many military head of state or president could have had the patience Abacha had? It is on record that Abacha was the only head of state who did not execute military copies. The story would have been different if he had been any other military officer. Bamiyi continued. If General Abacha wanted to deal with those who did not support his succession as civilian president, Alhaji Gidaru Idris, the former secretary to the government of the federation, and I, who had the courage to advise him on the issue, would have been the first people to be eliminated, not Dia and his group. Click this video here for full detail of the coup as told by General Dia. If you enjoy this video and find it valuable, consider subscribing to this channel and like this video. Thank you very much for watching.